Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Energy, and I will be briefly describing to you what I'm going to present in this webinar on torque evaluation and threaded fasteners. Let me give a little overview of torque on threaded fasteners. The general process of tightening threaded fastener assemblies usually uh, uh, involves controlling both the input torque and the angle of turn in order for you to achieve the desired preload of uh, the bolted assembly. Now there's uh, an important and critical role of friction in this, in evaluating, in evaluating the torque. Especially we need to consider both the underhead and the threaded contact zones uh, when it comes to uh, evaluating the total torque uh, from uh, the threaded assemblies. One thing that we will consider is the torque and uh, the angle of turn in a relationship and the total torque that's achieved on the on the threaded fastener is a sum of the underhead and the thread and the clamping force. Generally, the underhead friction contributes to about 50% of the overall torque. The thread friction contributes to about 40%. So between the underhead and the thread, you, are, you have about 90% of the, the total torque evaluated, and the remaining 10% is go, going towards the clamping force. This is the relationship between the torque and the angle of turn. T equals K times D times F. The K is the knot factor, the D is the no nominal diameter, and F is basically the force achieved from the Hooke's law if you can conceptualize the bolt and the member plates to be sort of an equivalent spring system, and F equals you know, stiffness times the displacement. And the displacement, again, can be expressed in terms of the angle of turn from the torque. Now, how do you create the, the geometric interference in order to simulate the applied torque on the fastener? Uh, we can do it a couple of ways. Uh, we'll talk more about this in the webinar. One is to basically you know, go into space claim or discovery and then create an, off, uh, create an interference based on the geometry. And in the contact, you can set the offset to zero. Another method is basically if you don't you know, create the geometric overlap or sort of, sort of that interference to create the preload from the torque, you can add a contact-based offset to create that interference. Finally, in the webinar, I'm going to talk about a uh, little more in-depth on how you can determine the total torque uh, from this uh, uh, threaded fastener assembly. Um, there is a one way you can output is through the solution information, and you can actually put a result tracker, some kind of a force from the contact pressure. Now, for 3D, this is force, but for 2D axisymmetric models, this is actually going to be uh, input as a torque, which is kind of explained in this uh, bottom line here that in 2D axisymmetric model, the reported item is the maximum torque. That's usually calculated for a friction coefficient of one. So you have to scale your uh, results based on the friction to get the overall torque. So in our example, what I will demonstrate in the webinar is we have two threaded regions. Uh, so we basically sum the torque from the two threads, and then there's one underhead region, and then we multiply with the corresponding friction coefficient to get the total torque. So that's one way you can output that interactively with the GUI. But in the webinar, I'll go in depth and cover a few more methods by which you can determine the total torque. The first method is basically a traditional approach that I like to call where we do a hand calc. So it's pretty simple. The way we do that is we take the total, we take the contact pressure for each contact element and multiply by the area of the corresponding contact element to get the normal force. Once you get the normal force, you multiply that with the friction coefficient to get the shear force on each contact element. And then the shear force from each contact element is multiplied by the distance of the contact element centroid from that axis to get the torque for each contact element. And then basically sum that up for all the contact elements to get the overall torque. Now, generally just keep in mind that the torques from the underhead and the threaded friction accounts for about 90% of the overall torque. So you can use that when evaluating the total torque. So that's one of the methods. The second method that I'm going to you know, demonstrate in the webinar um, is uh, using the relationship between the torque and angle of turn. So we'll use this equation K. The delta T, which is the torque, equals K times D times stiff, uh, the force. And we can use that to evaluate torque as well. There's a, a third technique by which uh, we can use a programming so we can actually key in some command objects where uh, basically that will also evaluate the torque on the underhead and the thread regions for you. And then uh, basically you can you know 
estimate that to be the 90% of the total torque, and from that you can evaluate total torque. So that's everything that's covered in the webinar. Um, I'd encourage all of you to sign up and tune into it. We'll cover more in depth on all those different methodologies for evaluating torque, and uh, we'll cover that uh, uh, with a live example. Thank you for watching this short presentation.